Hi, I'm Kevin with Slab Stitcher, and today we're going to introduce a video to show our clients a little more about how the kit works and to get you stitching even quicker. And for potential customers, we want to show how the Slab Stitcher increases the value of any workshop, no matter what you build or what your skill level is, we have something to make you a better, faster, and more efficient woodworker. The Slab Stitcher is a device we created that allows you to put bow tie inlays uh, quicker, easier, and with a perfect fit every time. And whether you want the traditional shape in wood or aluminum, or one of our more elaborate designs, like the Dragonfly, this kit is all-inclusive, so with one starter pack, you are good to go and you can build as your workshop needs. So we're going to unbox one of the Master Pack starter kits, which is my personal recommendation for the best place to start with the Slab Stitcher for building your collection. It offers three different size bow ties in the traditional shape, and it comes with two of each size in either walnut, cherry, maple, or white oak. So when we open this up, each kit is going to have a white side spiral bit and a guide bushing. In addition, you're going to have your bow ties to start in small, medium, and large. You're also going to have your templates. So we have our small, medium, and large. And then you also have your mainframe. And the mainframe is what allows you to clamp down, and it also lets you have the different templates, which simply then click right in. Um, with these, it's fairly simple. With the more elaborate designs, you'll need the mainframe to stay in one spot. So when you change out the center template, you can make sure you get your more elaborate designs without having this shift at all. So that's why we designed the mainframe with its offset clamping ability. Now that you have one of our starter kits, let's talk about what else you need, which is simply a beveled edge chisel and a router. Now, some routers come with the sub base that already accepts a guide bushing, which means you're ready to start right away. If you have one of the routers that doesn't take a guide bushing, you're going to need one of our sub bases, which we do sell at slabstitcher.net. So let's get one of the new sub bases installed. We simply start by removing the factory sub base plate. We will insert our centering guide pin and then tighten until finger snug. We will add our guide bushing to the new sub base plate. Each sub base plate is specific to the router, so before purchase, please ensure that you have the right model of your, of your router. And then we will drop it in, align our screw holes, put the new sub base back on. Now we can go ahead and put our router bit in. In every starter kit, we've included a white side spiral down cut bit, which we found gives the cleanest cut and it's the perfect router bit to go with our setups. We're gonna simply drop it all the way down and then come up slightly so we're not all the way in the bottom of the router. Tighten that up by hand and then use the wrench to finish it up and we'll put our sub base back on. So now we're gonna go ahead and set the depth. And this is a very important step to make sure that your bow tie lays flat and isn't too proud or too shallow. To do so, we're gonna take two of our bow ties or any of the inlays we're using in our kit and put one of our templates on top. And that should give you the proper spacing so that when you take your router and drop the bit down, once it hits the wood, and here we're using scrap wood, and then lock it in place, our depth is now perfect for the next step. Next, we'll place our inlay. We're going to go ahead and place this one right here, and we tend to trace them just because it allows us to visualize our spacing, and it also shows us exactly where we need to drop our template for the next step. Since we picked a large bow tie, we'll go ahead and take the large template. To place it, you simply take your mainframe with the words facing up so you can read everything correctly, as well as with the template, and it simply presses in with even pressure on two sides and press firmly. When we come over here, we'll try to figure out the best layout for the clamping. You want to give yourself as many clamping options as possible 
So we're gonna go ahead and orient this one this way. So let's talk about the routing strategy. Um, with these kits to work really well, and really good advice for any routing templates, is you want to go clockwise along your pattern, and then when you get all the way through, then you can kind of start taking a sweeping motion as you work your way across. It's really important to only do the outside border once, because if you have shifted this kit, you could have your alignment come a little bit off, and then your bow tie won't fit perfectly anymore. So after putting on your personal protection equipment, we can go ahead and get started. Now, when we actually begin, we're going to have the router set up so that when we tip into the, into the wood, we'll go into a large plot where we're not going to hit any of our template, and then we can go ahead and begin routing. We're also going to go ahead and have our hands in a safe spot, but where we have uh, as much control as possible. So I'm going to actually have uh, my forefinger and thumb on both hands nice and low so that I can adjust the base with small movements. We're going to hold the router down in there until it comes to a complete stop so that we don't accidentally lift up too soon and cut into our template and then we'll see if we went ahead and missed any we'll spots. Have some small little corners to clean up. As you can see the router bit is going to have a rounded corner but we're going to go ahead and take our beveled edge chisel next and clean the corners out with just some real quick cuts uh, and then we'll be all set. Um, all we're going to do is go ahead with our longer grain first and we're going to use the back of the chisel matched up with our routed recess, and we're gonna kinda of just walk it in with some nice easy cuts until it looks like we are nice and flush with the other side before switching to the other cut. Now all that's left is to go ahead and just put glue in the recess, put the bow tie in, and send it home. For the glue, less is more. All we're going to do is put a very thin layer across the entire bottom and then make sure we get glue up on our sides and then we'll put our bow tie in and use our mallet. So if you're like me, at this point you've probably stopped reading the directions. But it's really important to note that every bow tie and inlay will have a line and that designates the back of the piece. So when you put it in the, in the actual recess, you want to have the line facing down. I think that came out pretty well. So if you follow us on social media, or if you follow any woodworkers on social media, there are a lot of bow ties on the market, but there are no bow ties that have corners that are that sharp in their final kit. The slab stitcher gets bow ties done in five minutes flat. They're perfectly fit. Beginner woodworkers can handle it. Expert woodworkers can go quicker and get more product put out faster. It's really a kit for all skill levels, all abilities, all types of workshops. There, this kit allows you to work faster, cheaper, and get your product out the door. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions at all, you can check us out at slabstitcher.net, on Instagram at slabstitcher, or on Facebook at slabstitcher. All of our products are available for sale. We are always coming out with new templates all the time, new inlay woods and metals. So keep them following us on social media so you can always see what we're up to. Um, if you have a slab stitcher and you're happy, let us know. If you're not happy, let us know, we'll make sure it's right. Tell your friends, post your content, use hashtag slab stitcher so we can see it, and have fun. Uh, happy stitching, and keep that sawdust flying, guys.